Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Linode Hosting. If you guys are looking for reliable, fast web hosting, I've been using Linode for over eight years. It's what I use for CodeHawk uh, for every website I've had for the last eight years. Um, so I've done business with them for a long time, but now they're sponsoring the channel, which is really cool because I can actually vouch for the product. Linode is growing fast. They have a new data center that they just opened in Toronto and they're opening new data centers all the time. So make sure you guys check them out. There's a $20 discount in the link below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're talking about why Redis is awesome slash like why it's so hyped up. Why are people talking about Redis? Redis is not something new. It's been around for a long time now. And when I say a long time, it's been 10 years. So it was originally released 10 years ago as like an in-memory, what they call data structure. But essentially, it's a NoSQL database, just like what you've heard from uh, MongoDB and other things. Uh, but Redis actually differentiates itself from the competitors uh, by a pretty great deal and really when I say competitor when I was first building a, um, a Movies website in Django one of the best ways of being able to speed up a website, especially a um, An endpoint like I had certain endpoints that had like um like they were hitting like the red box API and It was very slow, right? So I was trying to speed up that process So I was like damn every time because uh, the whole thing was like, okay What are the top ranked movies that are available on Reddit red uh, red box right now? So um, that was the situation and the, the problem that I had was that it was simply too slow. Like I was querying all kinds of different database. Uh, it was query. It was a hard hit on the, the red box database and the, the, the process was slow. So I realized though, I only need to make that request like once a day. Like I don't need to make it multiple times. Every time somebody refreshes the page, I need to make it one time. So what I turned to at that point was memcache and memcache was like the popular or memcached was really the popular thing for, for Django. And it's really its own separate project. So it can be used with Flask, Django, ASP.NET, whatever. Um, but it was about caching that particular database query, right? So you didn't have to hit the database over and over again. So for that 24 hour period of time, I would set memcache to say, okay, you know, the first time you hit this query, cache that and then save it. The problem with memcache compared to Reddit though, is that every time, um, you reset your cache, you lose all of your data. So um, there are certain things that you want to actually persist. And when it comes to persistence, Redis is what came along and and brought us persistence in a memcache type of, of style. So we can have this in-memory database caching to speed things up, but then Redis over memcache gives you the ability when you restart it that you don't lose all that information. Uh, and that information can be accumulated over weeks, months, and other, you know, sometimes it, it, just, it all would depend. Sometimes hours, days, minutes, whatever, depending on the, the application. But having to re, um, redo your cache over and over again every time you restart is, is kind of a pain in the ass. So really, the benefits of, uh, of Redis don't just really stop there. Redis itself, um, it's all about key value pairs. So if you look at the typical website these days right you go to the console you look at this um everything is json data right so it all looks like this if i could actually type this is your uh, json data so your title equals chris and then another thing is a uh, favorite color equals red all right so x is now a javascript object so in the same sense that like Redis it works in the exact same way, it's a document system. So you can say, you know what, give me X dot title. What is the value you get Chris back. So like that is actually how you're storing things in the actual Redis database. So it, it very much, I think aligns itself with JavaScript, with JSON data structures, um, and overall just web development. So that's really why it's so hyped up. And plus the community is, um, has backed Redis more than other competitor products because eventually we get to this point where it's like well redis is kind of doing the best job so far so everybody kind of gets behind it says that it's the best things in sliced bread and then eventually something else comes along and we all jump on that but for right now everybody's jumping on redis and it's been that way for a long time um and when i say everybody now what i mean is like corporations are jumping on it not just indie hipster level developers that are like this stuff is great because i've worked with all this other stuff and i know better than companies like the, the actual companies are like hey this is really good so um usually when i when i when i hear about tech like i kind of wait around for whether or not companies adopt it because 
that tells me whether or not I'm going to end up wasting my time or not. So another thing that Redis does very well, in my opinion, is that it works with local storage. So local storage is something that is not used enough. So you have the ability to set an item and, and it's just a string value. So you just say, okay, I want this to be uh, my my key is the, the value. And then here you can just simply say, let's go ahead and um, we're gonna say, because you have to turn it to a string, we're gonna say uh, json.stringify. And then we're gonna pass in the X variable that we just created. And now inside of our local storage, if we go over to our sources, I'm sorry, application, go to local storage, and we look inside of here, we now have this Redis. Uh, Redis is obviously using, their website is using local storage, so you can see what they're doing here. Um, and we probably need a refresh actually. So it's actually not letting me modify the local storage for another website. So I'd have to do that from the actual script file from the page. I didn't actually try to do that before, but um, you can see probably, let's see if I can get the item in memory here. Uh, just my key. Um, so it is coming back, but it's actually not showing up in the application. I'm assuming through like uh, security concerns that Google has that, that I might try to fuck with the local storage of, oh wait, no, there it is. Oh, okay, so anyway, it puts it under, I'm sorry, it puts it under the domain of the, the, the dot .com that you're under. So you can see that it is storing it right there. So the reason why I mentioned local storage and show you this example is just simply that local storage is dealing with JSON data objects. And that is what React and Vue and Angular and all of these client-side libraries are dealing with. It's what JavaScript can deal with very easily. It can be transferred across HTTP very easily. So that's why you're seeing MongoDB and other NoSQL databases start giving rise, CassandraDB and all these other things. And, uh, and Redis is just another one to the flavor. But if I were gonna have to choose between Redis or Memcache in 2019, I think I'm going with Redis. Whereas five years ago, I know for a fact I wouldn't have said the same thing. So um, one of the things that you guys should keep in mind that Redis really what it does is it's actually taking and persisting all of this data, but it stores it in memory. So the reason why it's so fast to retrieve something from a Redis database versus a SQL Server database or a MySQL database is simply because the data is in the random access memory. It is in like actual memory, like the electronics of the computer, the energy of the computer and that's where it's at. You know what I mean? It's not sitting on a magnetic stripped hard drive or something like that that has to be read. It's not even sitting on a, um, anyway, the words are failing me, but the, the hard drive SSD, I'm not sure. I can't think of the name, but I, it's the, the modern day faster hard drive. It's not using magnetic strips and stuff. So really it all boils down to guys, when you're building single page apps or you're building any sort of web-based application that has a lot of functionality, then there is gonna be times that you have to use local storage or cookies to store data to the client's machine that you don't, have, you don't wanna have to, to get over and over again. And or you have to store that in session. And a lot of times it's all of the above, but there are so many different areas and avenues that we can use to store certain pieces of data, whether it's on a session server um, or it's on local storage or it's in a cookie or it's in a local text bot. Like who, like you have all kinds of different options, but, um, Redis definitely gives you the ability to allow for like sticky sessions without, without massive amounts of infrastructure. And then finally, Redis itself is an open source project with huge community support. So it's not one single company that's behind this. It's actually, there's now so many different companies that are using it and contributing to it that um, it's almost becoming like a jQuery of the web where it's probably not gonna go anywhere for the next five or six years at the minimum. All right, guys, and then um, the last thing I'm gonna share with you guys is the DB Engines ranking website, which is a website dedicated towards figuring out how popular database engines are. So take this stuff with a grain of salt, by the way. I mean, I, honestly, I can tell you for a fact, I've tried to do, do similar things and like you should take it all with a grain of salt. <laughs> but um, Oracle being the number one database, doubtful, but maybe I could be wrong. Oracle is a huge company. Most people hate it, it seems like. Uh, MySQL seems yeah, maybe I agree with this list. I, I definitely agree with this list. I think uh, Oracle's probably number one over all that stuff. I mean, MySQL is probably number one for most indie level developers. I mean, that was my database of choice for the longest time. 
Uh, I've used SQL Server quite a bit, but all professionally, and I would never want to use it pers personally. And then Postgres, I've also used that personally, Mongo as well. Uh, and then, but anyway, Redis dropped the position here because Elasticsearch is uh, with, with big data and all that stuff. You're starting to see like Cassandra and uh, things like that start to come in here. So you're going to see Redis start to have a little bit of competition because ultimately Redis, although it is very, very stable and I wouldn't take too much into the dropping one position, the other databases in front of it here are so widely used and, um, and they, they accomplish more than just what Redis does. But what Redis does, they do it better than other databases in this system, at least from what I've seen.